Welcome to this writing summary of The Girl on the Train. Just a reminder, this is a writing summary, not a review, although I will share some of my thoughts about the film at the end. Okay, so the film has mostly been rated for violence and for the sex and nudity. And yeah, there's a lot of all of those in the film. So the violence is mostly domestic violence. It happens quite, well, most of it happens between couples. So, you know, men on women and women on men. Um, and it, it does get quite brutal. I mean, the most brutal scene is toward the end. And I don't want to give away any spoilers or anything, but this is where you do see someone being bludgeoned to death and then dragged and um, and hit even more until they're dead. You, you do see that dead body, particularly later on you see when the, the body has been found and you see some partially decomposed uh, hand, finger kind of images to know that that person uh, has well and truly passed away. So, but a lot of the other violence happens as yelling and screaming, people being pushed and shoved and their hair pulled, slapped, um, that kind of stuff. It is very close quarter violence, if you like. So, um, you know, there is a, a strong sense of tension and, and pain in, in those scenes. Um, the other scenes that I want to mention are about a, a baby dying. So there's one woman who talks about losing a child and while you, you see a re-enactment of the scene, you don't actually see a dead baby in close-up. What you do see is the, her reaction when she realises the child has deceased. And then you also see um, the burial scene happening so you see the baby wrapped up and obviously you know you understand the baby has died and the baby is now being buried so that you know is a little bit hard going um with blood and gore there is quite a lot of blood and gore in the film um you see a lot of you know a bit of spurting blood and blood spatter and bloodied faces particularly that victim who was bludgeoned of course there's quite a bit of blood on their head and face there is a scene when somebody is stabbed with an object and you see the wound quite Clearly it's quite grisly, you see a lot of flesh and, and blood spurting out of this wound and blood kind of all over their neck and face and head and clothing as a result. Um, someone else who goes to assist them then has very bloody hands as a re result too. So, you know, hopefully that gives you an idea. The violence, it, even though it's fairly frequent in the film, um, and there's one scene which is returned to quite frequently in the film where, where one woman is... Well, it's not always clear and it becomes more clear toward the end of the film what happened to her, but you do see her being kind of pushed around, um, if you like, but it's done in this very kind of, well, actually quite amateurish editing and out of focus, so you don't really know what's going on. But that, that scene is revisited quite a few times. The other strong um, subject in the film is the sex and nudity. There are quite a few sex scenes in the film and they happen in all kinds of places. So you see people having sex in the kitchen, in the shower, in the bedroom, um, out in the woods. And with the nudity, you do, there's a couple of scenes where you understand that they are both fully nude and you see people, you know, from a, a long distance or you might see them behind a shower screen or something like that. So you know that they're nude, but you don't see any genital detail, if that makes sense. It's like, a, you know, there's like a nude baby that you see, but you don't you know, see anything offensive. So while there is nudity represented in the film, you don't kind of see anything, you know, you don't see boobs, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, so there is a lot of infidelity in the film as well. This is a major theme through the film. So there's a lot of love triangles and people cheating and, and, and all of that and flirting and kissing and, and those kind of things as well. Alcohol is another very strong theme in the film and alcohol abuse is a very strong theme. So you do see somebody drinking quite heavily and quite regularly through the film. And all kinds of alcohol are present. So there's spirits and champagne and wine and beer. And um, you know, as I said, this is quite frequently through the film. You also see somebody intoxicated quite frequently, frequently through the film as well. So intoxication plays a heavy role as does, um, well, it's not really a, a heavy theme, but smoking appears in the film as well. Finally, swearing, uh, there's a few F words and S words. Um, yeah, well, swearing, you know, there's, there's, there's a fair bit of it, but funnily enough, and when I look back on the film, I don't really remember there being much, much swearing, although I know there was, and there's a few, I mean, I think whore is used a few times and, um, some name calling, but um, yes, yeah, swearing is probably the least troubling <laughs> part of the whole film. So in terms of the enjoyment of the film, now I have to admit, I haven't read the book, um, so I can't compare the book and the film, but did I like the film? Well, not really. I actually found it a little bit boring, I have to admit. It does this strange thing, and I'm, I'm, this is kind of, you know, from the book, obviously, where the narrative point of view switches between three people in particular. So because it, it's so busy trying to 
tell the same story from three different points of view. I feel like it goes around in circles a lot through the film and um, it just doesn't really go anywhere. And I do feel that the end twist is signposted from so early on in the film that by the time it happened, I, I just didn't really care. And also it is very hard to feel sympathy to people who are, you know, upper class, privileged and, um, I don't know, you know, his lives seem perfect from the outside and they're not particularly nice people. <laughs> so it does become difficult to relate to them and um, to feel any sympathy for them as, you know, they get themselves deeper and deeper into this, this neighbourhood mess. So that's my thoughts. The only thing that I will say is Emily Blunt's acting, of course, is wonderful. And there is one scene which I found quite stand out for me between two women. Um, one of them is employed as a nanny and she's... Uh, resigning from her job and the other one is, is outraged because she's just had this newborn and and she voices how hard it is to have a newborn and still run the house and do chores and go out to the market and all that sort of stuff while she's still nursing and the look on her face is is quite heartbreaking and you know I know as a mum and I'm sure many of you feel the same it's one of those things that we can't always say out loud um, but it's how we feel you know the burden um, and when you're nursing it, it can be really really difficult and so I found that interesting that that was actually dealt with on the screen I've never seen anything like that before so I, I found that quite nice but anyway uh, you know if you do go and see the film I hope you enjoy it everyone I do know who has read the book said that it, it doesn't compare very well that you know they found it a let down um, considering how successful and how much they loved the book but you know let me know your thoughts um, and I do hope you enjoy it um, you know leave me your comments below if you want to know a more detailed breakdown of the film then check out the website which is cinemum.net